there was this announcement about serverless and uh, here i want to know your your opinion yes so so that everything can be run on serverless uh, including like notebooks we can run notebooks now on serverless yeah. but a time like uh, it's easy to use but because there is one version of serverless yes and and for for example for me it's problem yes because uh, when you do some for example, machine learning in Python, so not native uh, Spark code, uh, there can be a lot of changes depends on version. So in fact, I would prefer to have like few versions of serverless yes, to, uh, to know what is the, uh, what is, what is uh, libraries behind it? What is your opinion on that? Yeah, so this is also something we, we talked about it. So. I will split this into into in two parts. So the first part so far now you cannot uh, run ML on the serverless. You cannot do much. You can do. We have some some frameworks that are already supported, like Scikit-Learn. Mm -hmm. But if you go back a bit in the like a little, little bit further, so serverless architecture is based on shared clusters. Yeah. So this is a new architecture. So there is two types. There is single mode, single uh, user, and shared one. So shared one, uh, you will see that you, won't, you can't find in any ML runtime now. So you will still need to use a single user. But for you can run scikit-learn on the shared cluster, which means you cannot, for now, use serverless to train your model or stuff like this. So by, it will change eventually. but. It yeah, was. because there was this issue recently that uh, Python version was upgraded, and after that, Panda stopped working. <laughs> and so, so it's always uh, for me for like when you have SQL, it's easiest because you can control uh, syntax. It's SQL syntax, but you when you mm -hmm. have a lot of external libraries, it's tricky to sometimes to go serverless. Yes, so uh, like with one version. And for the second part, you mentioned about libraries. So there is a new. Uh, feature that will be added to serverless. At least already tested in private preview, we're going to have a variable, uh, let's say, uh, or it's like an environment part where we can set up your libraries on your own. Like, and you can, uh -huh, okay. it's not installed one. And actually it's going to change, they're going to decouple the, uh, the our libraries from the, from, from the, uh, from the compute. So from serverless, so it could be great because then you, just have serverless where it's just Python and, and Spark, yes, and then you can add. Yes. You're going to have some libraries by default, and you can add the others. Why? Because you know that now when you uh, start a cluster, there is a startup time, but there is also uh, some time you spend to set up all the libraries. And sometimes you don't need 20,000 libraries, you just need five or six. So. This is something they're gonna bring, like adding an environment, like uh, um, a new UI called environment, if I'm not wrong, where you can add those specific libraries. And there is a specific talk about it. At Dice for those who have access to the uh, breakout sessions, there is specific talks about uh, several Databricks serverless offering and how this feature will be helpful to to handle those kind of uh, issues. And also, what, what is your like opinion about Spark Connect? Because now you don't need to use Py, Py Spark anymore because it's Spark Connect, so you can use Go or or Rust uh, or some other languages. Yes. So, uh, is your opinion that someday we'll go to Databricks and you will have notebooks in like all possible languages, or uh, or yeah. rather not? I think I think yes. I mean. They they did first of all like for those who don't know what Spark Connect were decoupling the uh, client from the server, which is very helpful. And when we first introduced this uh, Spark Connect, like you can just I don't know connect your uh, you're using your laptop, you're gonna run the code, but your code will will use the Databricks compute for example. And this is something this is something cool because. We're gonna you, you you decouple this, but of course also offer more possibilities. Like uh, as mentioned, like you have this uh, Rust, or you can develop with with other languages. And I'm really keen to see what the community will bring because, as you as you know, Apache Spark is uh, open source, so the community is contributing massively. And let's see where this will I think uh, will lead us.
Yeah, Go or Rust is already for available for Spark Connect, yes. So I think Rust is evolving very, very fast. Uh, uh, the Rust mm -hmm. Connect, like the Rust community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's faster than Python, yes. So sometimes it's important for some machine learning yes, stuff. And I think they also started working on the uh, Unity Catalog Rust Connector, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. So they just created <laughs> the, the repo, but this is something they are keen to work to work on. So feel free to join the discussions to discuss with the people behind uh, this, uh, this repo. Mm -hmm.